Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. If you need to lay down, there's plenty of room. In a Watson town, they always say we can sleep 200. I'm pretty sure we can get about that in here. It's been a good week. A couple announcements in the life of the church. Today, the uh, Strawberry Festival will be over at the Historic Warrior Run Church. Apparently, that starts here in a little while, so if you like strawberries, uh, that's the place to go today. Uh, the Warrior Run Fireman's Carnival begins on Monday. I believe the parade will be the following Saturday. Please make note of that. Um, and then next Sunday is Father's Day. I have lots of announcements here that I can't even give them all, so I had to get some help. But the ones I do have is I got a $10 donation from folks at Trinity last week. I'll be getting more stuff today that I will bring out. Um, I had a carload from Trinity last week to support Kids Cafe. So that was wonderful, and hopefully they'll continue to do that all month. I also have a check here for $1,000 for Kids Cafe. Wow. It's, uh, may we all share in God's peace and love. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. Adam Martin. These are folks that know Dee and have seen fit to make a nice donation to Kids Cafe. So I have a $1,000 check and a $10 bill here to whomever I have to give this to. Okay? No, you're not a bill for that. Okay. So somebody needed to know for a thank you card, uh, so I have a little note here with that. Okay. At this point in time, all the other numbers, I'm going to turn over to Sylvia at this point, and she, oh wait, before we go on, Carol. Can you tell us how everything went this week since we have the first week of Kids Cafe in? It went very well. We had about 20 kids a day, but I don't get discouraged by that because the first couple weeks are typically a little slower for them to start coming. But we took names this year, and we actually affected 50 kids because, like, we had 20 kids on Monday and 16 on Tuesday were new kids from Monday. Wow. So it, we gained a lot of kids every day. Every day we had new kids coming. Some familiar faces, some other faces. So um, I'm sure once they get into the summer routine and carnivals and vacations are over, we'll see higher numbers. But we can get 20. But we still plan on 40 a day because you never know when you're going to get hit and you don't want to run out of food. But it's going great, and I thank everybody for all their support. Uh, helping and donating money, uh, food, whatever is really appreciated. The program is going really well. Thank you. Now Trinity is going to do is going to try and supply the snacks for the month of June, and then we will take that on for July and August as our outreach ministry. So please keep that in mind. Start collecting up those little individually wrapped items and uh, bringing those in. But you can wait until July if you want. Uh, that's fine. Okay, I think I'm done. All right, on to Zoom. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I wanted to uh, mention the Synod Assembly is this weekend on Friday and Saturday, and Sharon Ray will be accompanying me to Synod Convention. Um, this is the year we elect a new bishop, so I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Um, with our giving, I'm pleased to announce that we are $965 to the good. We like to keep out of the red, and we are doing well, and thank you for all of that, for your contributions there. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was the carnival. So, if you had any preparation with setting up the, I'm sorry, my mind just went blank, trailers, or getting the food, um, the stocking of the food and the supplies. Would you please stand? Don't be shy. If you had anything to do with the fish fry stand, whether you were a fryer or a server or a cashier, please stand. French fry stand, please. Same thing, stand. If you were on cleanup duty, please stand. If you helped in any way with the carnival, please stand. Now look around. What a team. Thank you so much. And I, I do need to mention there was quite a few people who also
also volunteered that were not here today, and I thank them as well. Now for the results. It seems like Wednesday and Friday night were really the big nights of our event. Um, we took in for the whole week, and that's not that's excluding the fact that we did not open up on Tuesday night when it was raining. The total income came to $22,609.10. Our expenses were a little over $6,000, but our profit came to $15,969.03.
Mystic 1 and 3. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity. And bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, on God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. Second lesson is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
time and for many centuries afterward, if a person held a different view of the Holy Trinity, well, they were branded a heretic and sadly met an awful end. So it is my hope to speak faithfully and truthfully today to give glory and honor to the Holy Trinity. Now, the Holy Trinity, of course, is invisible. God is invisible. This is reality. How on earth does a person try to describe or explain something that is invisible? Human language is based on those things that we can physically identify, things we can see and experience, we give those things names. For example, I can see a chair, give it the name. I can feel a migraine headache coming on. Many of you also can relate to that. It too has a name. Now consider this. Imagine going back in time a thousand years and trying to explain the internet or social media. There it is. <laughs> right on the cue. Those folks would not be able to comprehend one word of it. At that time, many thought the world was flat compared to our increased knowledge and understanding of what the world is actually a globe. God realized the limitations of human language and he wanted to be seen and understood as the creator who cares and loves his creation. God wanted to be reached so that life could be freely given through So then a wonderful thing happens. God made a journey to earth and made himself known to his creation in a new and unexpected way. He was born as a human baby in the town of Bethlehem and he was called Jesus. God's physical presence on earth allowed people to talk about him in a whole new way. They could now, there could now be a specific language, jargon, they could call him by his name, refer to his activities, point to his good works, speak of his nature, and share their experiences with him to others. Through Jesus Christ, a very personal relationship with him could now be developed. Jesus, through his life on earth, God's one and only son, revealed the nature and the will of his invisible heavenly father. His life on earth, his ministry were very busy. He taught the people wherever he went, in synagogues, in villages, in fields, and even one time from a boat while the crowd stood on the shore. He taught them about his father in heaven and the way to eternal life. Jesus also performed miracles wherever he went. He turned water into wine. He walked on the water. He calmed the storm. He fed 5,000 plus people. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. And that's just mentioning a few high points. Through Jesus, we see a God who loves us all. His will and intent is to restore us to a joyful life full of hope and specifically give us eternal salvation with him in glory forever and ever. Since the days of the Garden of Eden where humankind first decided to depart from the ways of God, nothing but trouble and chaos has followed us. <clears throat> Sin and its consequences are always with us. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they caused the world to change. There was no going back to the way it was. But in his great mercy and love for his creation, God enabled Adam and Eve to survive in that changed world. Since the day of the original sin, our bodies now grow old and decay and 
and someday die. We are all born with varying degrees of physical, mental, spiritual limitations and challenges. None of us are perfect. In fact, we're far from it. We're all flawed and we need God's help. Our greatest challenge today seems to be to be able to love one another. Watch the news. Hate is everywhere, and the media has no problem selling it. Whenever we sin, we change the world that we live in, in some way, shape, or form. Through greed and lies, our relationships are broken. There is no going back to the way things were. However, Jesus, through his love for us, is willing to help us survive in that changed world. He can bring healing in new and unexpected ways. His love and care is as much for you and me as it is for all creation. Now, after Christ's ministry on earth and he ascended into heaven, back with the Father, he promised that the Holy Spirit would come so we would never be alone. Like Jesus, the Holy Spirit is the nature and love of God dwelling within us. Though not like Jesus, who showed up in one place at one time for a particular purpose. Instead, the Holy Spirit dwells throughout the entire world all the time. At the time when Jesus was on earth, people were able to see and point to him and his miracles and his teachings, and they recorded these actions for future generations so they too could believe. Today, God continues to work through the Holy Spirit. It is proof to his continued existence with us, as if Jesus were here with us in person, in our communities, at that carnival, in those stands. The Spirit was with all of us those nights. Furthermore, God's work through the Holy Spirit is evidence of his commitment to maintain and restore his creation in new and unexpected ways. Jesus deals personally with you and me, as does the Holy Spirit, on behalf of God the Father. By now in your life, you've heard many, many sermons and sang many hymns about how Jesus loves us. Today, though, I want to go just a little bit deeper. The Spirit of God moves over the face of the earth, motivating all sorts of people into action for the purpose of bringing salvation to all his creation. When and where it is necessary, the Spirit of God raises up a voice in the wilderness to speak to those suffering under various difficult conditions. <coughs> Consider this. We pray for healing. We've always been praying for healing. And what does God do? He gives us medicine. He gives us doctors. He brings us hospitals. All those things came through Christianity. I mentioned just this one example because the list of God's work through Christ and the Holy Spirit is truly endless. And it touches everyone around us. From the very salvation that we are given to the very air we breathe. Think about this. Who made the first clothes that all other clothes have been patterned off of? God did. Think about that. We take many things in this world for granted, but God's hand is truly in it all. In all the Holy Spirit's busyness throughout the world, there is one voice missing, or it is at least muted, and that is the voice of forgiveness. The greatest work of God, the 
greatest act of mercy and grace and the restoration of life is the act of forgiveness. Jesus died a terrible death on the cross to restore our relationship with God. Through this miraculous act, our sins are forgiven. Whatever wrong we have done, God will remember it no more. It was an unexpected act, but it was the only way in which we can now be renewed in our relationship with God and someday reach heaven. This act of forgiveness through Jesus was greater than any of the healing he provided or the teaching or the feeding of the hungry. Think about that for a minute. Forgiveness delivers us from judgment. It gives us peace, hope, joy, and faith. Jesus has restored our relationship with God forever. Forgiveness now enables us to respond in kind to others. Right? But yet we struggle. As the church, we are charged with the work of forgiveness. Jesus has commissioned us, his followers, his disciples, to go into the world and to declare God's saving grace through Jesus Christ and Christ alone, shown for all to see by exercising forgiveness. When I say it that way, it kind of sticks, doesn't it? Kind of a bite there. Those words cut hard and deep. And they convict us to our very soul. In doing God's work, we too are subject to those same truths. We are not exempt. You see, that's the work of the Holy Trinity within us. And I know for a fact, someone here needed to hear that today. Finally, all of us here today must know and be aware of the fullness of the Holy Trinity. We are experiencing it right here, right now, during this worship service. Through the divine actions of the Holy Trinity, we are strengthened, renewed, refined, and preserved in body and soul for an everlasting life. In the service, think about how we walk through it. We confess our sins up front, and we receive forgiveness. We hear the word of God and we feel his love and his care for all of us. All three persons of the Trinity are right here with us now in their own unique way and purpose. God the Father forgives us, Jesus the Son saves us, and the Holy Spirit moves within us to believe. And if we can really connect with the Trinity in this time, focusing on that relationship, opening our hearts, there is a good possibility you may be changed in a new and unexpected way and experience God like never before. The theology of the Holy Trinity can be confusing to understand. If it is to you, don't worry, you're not alone. But do remember this, for there is only one name given under heaven and on earth through which we are saved, and his name is Jesus Christ. So if someone asks you, show me God, point them to Jesus. If anyone asks you, show me the Holy Spirit, point them to Jesus. For in Jesus, the invisible, is revealed. Amen.
Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. We pray for the church throughout the world, its leaders, that the work of the Spirit unite us in Christ to proclaim the wonders of God. The Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the majesty of creation, the moon and stars that enlighten the night, the birds that inhabit the sky, the fish that reside in the seas, and that all creatures may flourish together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all levels of government, for wisdom and truth displayed in world leaders, and for interna international relief agencies that God's love poured out into our hearts extend to all people and nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, that they are comforted, for the despairing, that they receive hope, for infants and children, that they be granted nurturing caretakers, and for all who cry out to God in any need. We lift up to you today the needs and concerns of Mae Watson, Molly Moser, Wanda Groom, John Flieger, Katie Yoder, Roger Rovenault, Rose Hager, Greg Lannon, Diana Flieger, Kathy Brindor, Trish Brindard, Harper Marziel, Marilee Bauer, Wayne Mingle Jr., Heather Harrison, Bruce and Patty Roulette, Katie Watson. And now, Lord, we add to that list all those needs on our hearts today.
Trinity, the whole earth is full of your glory, and we are in awe of your majesty. In great kindness, you reveal yourself as the one who forgives us. You bless us and invite us to go into the world and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us to respond in faith and go where you lead us each day. We dedicate our gifts to you so that our community, your ministry, will draw closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord pour out his favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.